that piano is incredible, isn't it? As soon as she stops playing, it all goes quiet. Wow. Good morning, everybody. And good morning to everybody on YouTube and the other thing that they recorded on. Uh, I forget the name of it. I'm not one of those type of people. Um, but good morning to everyone who, who's listening, watching, um, and just be part of our service this morning. Before I start the service with the notices I have, uh, Pastor Mike has something to say. Pastor Mike has something to say. Good morning, all. Well, I thought I'd announce that in the week, there was a very special occasion. Jody and Neil got engaged. <laughs> and they're getting married in this church next August. More details to follow. Also, this week is the last week Dave's going to play for the season, and he'll be in Manor Gardens on Saturday at 11 o'clock? 12. 12 o'clock. So let's go and see him and give him some support as he closes down. And then he's going to record an album, so he's going to be busy. Not the same day, no, no, no. <laughs> Over to Phil. Thank you, Mike. Congratulations to both of you. Nice to see you've got the hair matching now. <laughs> it's coming together, isn't it? <laughs> well done. Well done. <laughs> well, it's cheaper with one colour, isn't it? You do two hairs. <laughs> as long as they don't argue as to who goes under the tap first. That's the important thing. <laughs> right, notices now then. <coughs> um, a couple of notices from... Uh, Dorothy. Uh, Chrissy has now moved to Sidmouth Hospital uh, and aiming to get her back on her feet and mobile again. So pray. Uh, do pray for her. And news about Willie, Rita Willis's funeral, which is on Tuesday the 13th of September at quarter past 12 at Westerly Crematorium. Do you know where that is, Mike? Bristol. Is Bristol, is it? Right, yeah. okay. There we go. Westerly Crematorium in Bristol. Um, and that's at uh, quarter past 12 on the 13th of September. Other notices uh, today. Uh, Bible study. Bible, Bible started. Bible, Bible study. Study is, starts up again on Friday of this week at 2 o'clock. And then every Friday at 2 o'clock, we, we used to do it, as you may remember, alternate afternoons and evenings. We're now going to be over the winter period doing it just at 2 o'clock on Fridays. And you may have noticed that we've got a bookcase of books over there. Uh, that's the <coughs> church library that was locked in the, um, uh, in the office where people couldn't get at it. So we brought it out and it is now available for anyone to use. There's a, um, somewhere on there, there's a notebook where you can, and a pen, just sign your name and the name of the book that you're borrowing and sign it back in again afterwards. Other than that, they're all there to be used, and please do use them. They're a resource for the church. So that's notices, unless anyone else has anything they want. Yeah, to. I have. Uh, right, go on then. Let Roger go first. Uh, Okay, thank you. Kasima News, see Roger afterwards. For and a I would like to thank Henry, Phil, and Dave on Friday. <laughs> they cleared with me every spare chair and lifted them upstairs. And if you know those chairs, you know how heavy they are. But they're all now safely upstairs, and it does make the sanctuary look much better without stack chairs. So thank you, guys. I wouldn't have done it without you. Thank you. Um, okay, so we'll move on now. Let's, let's come before the Lord, shall we, in prayer. Father, we welcome you this morning. We thank you that we can meet together and 
praise and glorify your name. So as we come together to hear your word, to read your word, to hear what you have to say to us later, we open our hearts to you and ask that you'll be with us, you'll be in us, you'll be around us, and that your name will be glorified. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Our opening scripture this morning comes from Psalm 66, verses 1 to 4. Shout with joy to God, all the earth. Sing the glory of his name. Make his praise glorious. Say to God, how awesome are your deeds. So great is your power that your enemies cringe before you. All the earth bows down to you. They sing praise to you. They sing praise to your name. The start of the uh, the uh, psalm speaks of his awesomeness and his power and his glorious presence. We hear more about that later on from Mike uh, when he comes to bring the word to us. So let's stand and sing adoration. singing how beautiful, no sorry, we sing beautiful one.
Um, that theme with beautiful saviour. We're now going to take up an offering, and Barbara will play in the background.
Father, we thank you for this offering. We ask, Lord, that as we receive it, you will instruct us how you want it used. May it be for the extension of your kingdom, for the glory of your name, and for all the support that you give us. We just pray, Lord, that you will use this and we will use it wisely in Jesus name Amen Amen. we now come to our pastoral news um, which is going to be quite short at the moment because we haven't got a lot to say today fortunately uh, please continue to pray for uh, those on the News, list, news sheet, those mentioned on the news sheet on a regular basis that continue, that need continued prayer. Um, please also pray for Chrissy as she moves into uh, the hospital in Sidmouth um, and um, pray too for the family of Rita Willis as, as she, uh, as the funeral comes up later in the month. I also uh, feel we should pray for Andrew again a continual, continual prayer. Uh, he's uh, had a, a, a bout of um, pain and a, an x-ray last week. Uh, it's now um, arthritis in the hip, isn't it? Yes. So please pray for him uh, on a continual basis, please. Unless there's anyone who knows anything else about pastoral matters, we'll move on. Anything else? Okay. Good. Oh, yes. Yes, okay, yes. I'm sorry, I was told about that, and uh, it had gone out of my mind because I didn't write it down. Uh, please pray for Alice and Peter and their family. Um, complicated issues, etc., etc. God knows all the answers. Just pray for them, please. Thank you. We now come to sing again, so let's stand and sing, Come As You Are. From wherever you be, come broken hearted, let rescue begin. Come find your mercy, oh sinner, come near. The earth has no sorrow that heaven can heal. The earth has no sorrow that heaven can heal. So lay down your burdens, lay down your shame. All who are broken, lift up your Come sit at the table, come taste of the grace. There's rest for the weary and rest for the endures. The earth has no sorrow that heaven can be. So lay down your burden. your face oh one 
I seem to have had a little bit of a problem with the words on that one. I'm sorry about that. These things happen from time to time when you're using technology. <coughs> However, <coughs> it's time for our reading this morning. And our reading this morning, well, there's two readings actually. The first one is just one verse, 1 Chronicles 29 verse 11. And the second reading is Luke 1, 46 to 55. <coughs> reading from 1 Chronicles 29, 11. Yours, O Lord, is the greatness and the power and the glory and the majesty and the splendor. For everything in heaven and earth is yours. Yours, O Lord, is the kingdom. You are exalted and head over all. Then we move on to Luke, chapter 1, verse 46, and we read Mary's song, the song she sings when she is told she's going to give birth to Jesus. Mary said, My soul glorifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Saviour. For he has been mindful of the humble state of his servant. From now on, all generations will call me blessed. For the mighty one has done great things for me. Holy is his name. His mercy extends to those who fear him from generation to generation. He has performed mighty deeds with his arm. He has scattered those who are proud in their innermost thoughts. He has brought down rulers from their thrones, but has lifted up the humble. He has filled the hungry with good things, but has sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel, remembering to be merciful to Abraham and his descendants forever, even as he said to our fathers. Thank you, Lord, for your word. Before Mike comes to speak to us and use those readings, we're going to stand again and sing, Great is the Lord.
city of our God, the holy place. The joy of the holy. Praise is the Lord in the way and the victory. He aids us against the comes to bring us your word now I pray that you'll enable him to hear what you want him to say and enable us to open our minds and hearts to hear and feed on your word in Jesus name Amen, Amen. <coughs> well as you can see this morning has been all the songs have been saying how great our God is, how great he was to save us from certain death. He sent his son, which he didn't have to, to love us ere we ever loved him. What a great God we have. And when we come to look at the scriptures and look at how great our God really is, we see in 1 Chronicles where they praise God for his steadfastness, for his love, for his constant care. And that didn't end in the Old Testament. We come forward and we see Mary. And we have to remember, Mary at that time was probably 12 to 14. She was a very young girl. She was not a mature woman. Yet she took on having our Lord. Why? Because she loved her God. She knew how great he was. And when we come to look at this scripture, we see the first part. When, when she says, my soul glorifies the Lord. Glorifies the Lord. She delighted in her Lord. She absolutely, truly, truly Loved him with all of our heart. And that stands today, doesn't it? We are called to love God with all our heart, with all our soul, with all our mind, and all our body. And this first couple of verses speaks to discipleship. And we're all called to be disciples. God has done so much for us. And he, all he asks is that we will surrender our hearts to him, that we will be his. He is such a great and awesome God. What, what else could we want to do with our lives than praise and truly lift up God? God is our all in all, and he has to be. So this first three verses speaks of her discipleship. Even at that early stage, it talks of discipleship, how she will follow God, how she will obey God. And today, those verses are very relevant to each one of us because we are called not to be just believers. We are called to be 
disciples, to learn from the one who is worthy to learn from. We are called today to discipleship. We are called to say how great our God is. And then when Mary goes on to say, she speaks how great God is, how wonderful he is, and now that she has no choice but to obey him. And if we each want peace in our lives, and if we each want complete satisfaction, it is by listening and obeying God that we will find this peace. The Holy Spirit dwells in our hearts, and when we are at peace, we know it. There is peace in our soul. There are no troubles. And if there is troubles, we need to find out what those troubles are, because God is a great God, and he wants to answer our prayers. He wants to be there by our side, holding our hand, leading us on. He wants to be part of us. There is no greater thing than to love the Lord our God. We are called to love him beyond all. And Mary's love of him put her in great danger. Because don't forget, she wasn't married. She was not married to Joseph at that time. She'd been betrothed to him. Yes, she had. But she was not married to him. So to be found with child speaks of her betraying Joseph, doesn't it? And the penalty for that in those days, it wasn't like today. The penalty in those days was stoning to death. There was no messing about. You were stoned to death. It wasn't a slap on the wrist, you naughty girl, you shouldn't have done it. You died. So she took a very great, great risk in accepting this wondrous thing from God. She loved her God and she knew how great her God was and that he would protect her. And likewise, us today, we need to have faith that our God will protect us. That he will do as he says. The old saying is, what's written on the can, you can rely on. And we can rely on God, who is a wondrous and awesome God, to be by our side every, every single step of the way. You see, many people sadly think that they they took on this prosperity gospel. Many of you will know what I'm talking about. Come to Jesus, everything will be, everything will be tickety-boo, wonderful. You'll have no end of money. Everything will be great. You'll never face a problem in your life. Wrong. Jesus was very clear when he said, you follow me, you pick up your cross and walk with me. Life will not be easy. You will be despised. You will be hated. You will be talked about. You will be persecuted. He didn't say everything in the garden was rosy. God is not a God that just lets us live without problems. He wants us to solve problems in this world. He calls us to solve problems in this world. One of the things he calls us to do is to reach out and tell everyone of his love for this world. That can be risky, can't it? You can get offended in your workplace. As Pamela knows, she has to be very careful what she says and how she goes about it. Because we no longer live in a Christian country. And if you think we do, you're deceiving yourself. We live in a secular world that believes in secular things. They do not believe in a God. 
Even doctors, when they see a miracle, will try to dispute it. I've known many who have been healed from cancer, from tumors, and many other things. And the doctors have always tried to do anything but I say, well, that could be a miracle of God. The medical profession doesn't want to admit that there are God-given miracles. Now, that's not to say that you stick your hand against the television when some American evangelist says to you, send me $10 and I'll heal you. Doesn't work like that. Now, you've just wasted $10 or £10 or whatever you want to say. It's gone, brother, and he's buying a jumbo jet on it. God heals for those who he wants to heal. It is God that does the healing, not man. We can pray for healing, and we should be praying for healing. But it is God who heals, not man. God does the healing. How great is our God that he can heal what the physicians cannot. And he can do that, but only if it's in his will. I wish he'd take away all the ailments I got. Oh, by the way, I had my x-ray. Some of you, um, not my x-ray, my appointment with the... That's the one. That's the, the very woman. And I've got to go further. I didn't get away with it. But I praise God. Our God is great. I know that he has me in his hands. How great is our God. Yes, I've got to go and have some dye put into my veins and go through a CT scan to see what my arteries are doing. But I know that my great God is by my side. And whatever happens, he will be there with me. That's how great our God is. He doesn't desert us when we're ill. He doesn't abandon us in need. He's always there. What a great God we've got. No wonder Mary glorifies the Lord because he is awesome. Do you know, I, I hear everyone say, oh, that's awesome. There's only one time I use awesome. That's when I call my God because he's an awesome God, isn't he? He's an amazing God. You know, I, me- I remember when the Americans came over here and they, at the choir and they taught us awesome, didn't he? My God is awesome. He is awesome, truly awesome. Awesome. Isn't it time we started acting like we have an awesome God behind us? Isn't it time we started to trust in God, have faith in the God who created the universe, who created this world, who created everything on it, who is incapable of lying? It's quite funny. Many books have been rewritten, but this has never has. Down to 2,000 years and going. Still going. Still the word of God. Yes, there's been newer translations where we understand more of what the... Because if you ever bother to study Greek, <laughs> they can say one thing and they mean five. <laughs> depending on what they're saying. Very much like Welsh. No, I'm being serious. You can say Welsh, the same word, but it can mean three different things. <laughs> depending on how you are using it. So that's all that's happened to this word, but it has always stayed true. It hasn't had to be rewritten like many others. I think the Jehovah's Witnesses now are on three, volume three of their Bible, where they've changed it to try to attract people. They went from not believing Jesus was the Son of God to believing he was an angel, and believe he's a prophet. But they still don't accept that he is homoousios, as the same substance as God. Our God gave us his son as a personal sacrifice to each and every one of us. He died for everyone. But sad to say, not everyone Listens. But I did hear some good news this morning. There's a revival happening. But you didn't know that, did you? In young people. They are coming to prayer more than any other age group. So there's green shoots. 
But we need to be the ones who plant the seeds. Not just for them to pray, but for them to commit to Christ. But that's a, t a known fact. They've just done a survey in the Church of England. They're very good at surveys, the Church of England. And I'm not making fun. They are, because they are everywhere, aren't they? There is always a parish church somewhere in England that they can get information from. But it's a known fact that young people are turning more to prayer. That's an amazing thing, that we have a start of a reigniting of the fire in people's hearts. But we as mature Christians, as disciples, are there to tell them how great our God is, to reach them. The time for staying in here is ended, my friends. The time for taking the gospel out there has arrived. We are in the last times. Anybody who doesn't believe we're in the last times is deceiving themselves. You only have to look at the world. Look at Pakistan. How many of you know what's happening in Pakistan at the moment? Huge floods. People dying. Rivers overflowing. And not just by an inch or two inches. Washing houses away. They've just called out to the world, please help. We hear of rumors of wars and wars. We have tsunamis. We have earthquakes. Hey, read Revelation. It's all signs. Now, I'm not one of those wonderful men who were a few years back. The God is coming back at 20 past 11 next Sunday. And dull enough, dull enough to announce it on the TV. Problem with that is... On the Monday morning, he's got egg on his face. Because if God has come back, he's missed the boat. Then it's, oh, I got my figures wrong. Folks, only God knows when the time is right. But we must know that our God is so great that he knows when that time is. And he's telling us to hasten in our work. He's calling us to redouble our efforts to reach the lost and the lonely, to continue the mission of his son. And I'm sorry to say, folks, it's not just for me or, the, or others who go out. It's all of us are in this battle, every single one of us. When we take on Christ, we take on his mission. We're not to escape it. We are called to be disciples. And don't say, well, I'm only one, because guess what? Twelve turned the world upside down and changed the world from a pagan world to a Christian world. Did they not? So what have we done? Where are we in this? It's like when they say about recycling, oh, uh, I won't recycle. Well, it's only me, but it isn't only you, is it? It's everybody puts their green bag out on a, on, a, on a Thursday or whatever day you do it. Everybody puts their food waste out. And it does make a difference. So when we stand, maybe only 30 of us together, we're a powerful force. And anybody who tells me that the miracles have gone and died with the disciples, they need to reread the scriptures because the gifts of the Spirit are still here. They're still evident. They still need to be used. The only thing is you have to have faith to use those gifts. You have to search what God has for you. And don't give me, God hasn't given me a gift. Because trust me, you're wrong. He has given each one of us a part to play. It says in Scripture that we are a body. A body. No, we can't all be heads. We can't all be eyes. We can't all be feet or hands. But we all have a part to play. That's how great our God is. He knows as one we cannot stand, but as a 
body, we can stand against the gates of Hades itself. The thing is, it's time for Christians to awake or realize how great their God is, trust in their God, and move. Because unless we do, many souls are going to be lost. Seeds need to be spread. Fields need to be plowed with prayer. We need to get out there, share our stories. You don't need to know all of the scriptures. You just need to believe in Jesus Christ, trust in him, and then God will give you the words. I had a conversation with a guy a couple of weeks ago in this church. He said, I know you. I said, I know you. He said, you preach in our church. Did I? Yes, he said. 12 years ago, once a month. Did I? Yes, he said. He said, I'm from Romney Baptist Church. You used to come there when you were in college. They had a thing in college. Um, on, on Sundays, you had to go out to different churches in Wales and preach. And being as I lived in Pontypool, nobody from Cardiff wanted to come up to the valleys. They used to avoid it like the plague. They didn't want to go up the valleys. So I preached more or less twice a day every week throughout my college thing. I was supposed to have done it twice a month, but there were so many churches, I took up the thing. And then they used to moan because we used to get paid, but you didn't used to get paid as in they'd give you money. They'd give you a check for the college. And then depending on how many miles you'd done and how many times you preached, you got a percentage of the money. I always had the most. And they used to get on. I said, well, how many sermons have you preached this year? Oh, nine. How many sermons have you written? One. What do you mean, one? Well, I dust this one off and, and, and change it for that church. I said, so have you ever heard about giving a message to the people from God? Not the same message, trotted out nine times. They Now, a lot of my class have fallen away from the ministry. They thought it was going to be an easy job. Our God is awesome. And if we stick close to him, we can never go wrong. This was the last job in the world I wanted. In fact, all the way through my college life, I just prayed, Lord, if you can take this cup away from me, do so. But in the end, your will be done, not mine. And I've lasted 12 years now. That's going well, that is. A lot of burnt out. But why don't I? Because I know how great my God is. I know he's by my side. I know he's got my corner. I know he's got my back. And I know... He can never let me down. So what's stopping us then in closing, folks, in being the, God, the people that God wants? What is stopping us? Why aren't we like Mary? Why aren't we trusting God? The only answer is, there's two answers. One, we're lazy, idle and don't want to do anything. Two, we're scared. First one, Laziness, answer for it. Pray to God for strength. He'll give you it. Second one, easier. Trust God. Because if we trust God and how great God is, he'll never let us down. So let's try to be the people that God wants each of us to be. Don't go to God defeated. Go to God with confidence. In our hearts. That he has a plan. He has a purpose for each and every one of us. Let's seek this from this day. God's way for our life. Be true disciples. Believe in him. Trust in him. Know he is an awesome and great God. That he'll never let us down. He's always by our side. And let's take these streets and houses for Jesus. Let's take back the ground that God created.
Because the pretender to the throne is ruling at the moment. The devil. And it's time to say, stop. It's time to say, halt. It's time to turn back to the awesome and great God. Amen. Let's pray. Father, help each of us, Lord. Awaken to the power of your Holy Spirit, Father. I ask, Lord, that no, Lord, in fact, Lord, I, 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 I demand, Lord, that you, pro you keep your promises which you are willing. But we will have our hearts open, Father, to receive it, Lord, and we won't block it. That the Holy Spirit will anoint each and every one of us like it did the faithful in the upper room, Father. I'm praying, Lord, this morning for a reigniting of the Holy Spirit to descend on each and every heart in this place, Father. And to transform us into the people you want us to be. We ask this, Father, because you are a great and awesome God. And we worship, honor, love, and praise you, Father. Through your Son's most magnificent name, we ask this prayer. Amen. Powerful stuff. Lots to think about. And I would encourage to, um, to view this again on YouTube or wherever you can get hold of it. I think it, there's a lot more in that that God wants us to hear. Thank you, Mike. We now come to the prayers of intercession, and I hand over to Alison. Although we've had a really inspiring time this morning, I know there are still some people here with big problems, and outside the, in the world outside, there are so many people with big problems. And I think that's where I started today. So, let us pray. Lord, it is hard to give you thanks and praise when life seems to be collapsing all around us. But we do want to thank you that in Jesus, his death and resurrection, you have opened the way for us to be adopted as children of a loving father. Amen. And you want to bless us. We pray for those in this church family who have great health needs. Some already mentioned, awaiting test results, consultants appointments, and those who are just having to begin to cope with a less, uh, less a different way of living from what they've done before. May many, may those unwell and those who care for them know peace from you as they wait. But we do pray for those working in the NHS, that you will support them and that the many problems there begin to be sorted. Many are living in fear of the winter because of the cost of living crisis. We pray for those worst affected, that they may find someone to talk to and those who can help in practical ways. Thank you for the way Mike tries to help those in need and lead them to the only complete answer, which is in Jesus. If we are those who can be generous with time or money, please show us how. And now we bring to you those whose livelihood is threatened in some way. Small businesses because of energy costs. Hospitality because people have less money to spend on eating out. Farmers and growers because of lack of rain affecting their crops and animals. Thank you for the rain we have had. But Lord, we pray for much more. 
and in some parts of the world, much less. We pray for the people of Pakistan and Nepal where the monsoon rains have caused so much damage. And those in northern Kenya and the Horn of Africa, among other places, where the rains have failed, sometimes for years, may we be able to respond to calls for aid. And Lord, the world is full of violence. We pray for the family of Olivia in Liverpool and the police there investigating three murders at this time. And we thank you for the courage the people of Ukraine are showing <coughs> in their ongoing war and the support from many countries. And we do also thank you so much for the safe passage of some ships taking Ukraine's grain through the Black Sea to help in other places in great need of food. Thank you, Lord, that you listened, always listened to us. And we now want to join in the Lord's Prayer and help us to look in the coming week for the signs, or as Mike said, the green shoots of God's kingdom and to praise you for it. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Thank you, Alison. We now come to our final song, which is How Great Is Our God. The splendor of the King Clothed in majesty That all the earth rejoice That all the earth rejoice He wraps himself in light Darkness tries to hide Trembles at his voice, trembles at his voice. How great is our God. Say with me, how great is our God. And no one will see how great, how great is our God. Time is in his hands, beginning and the end, beginning and the end. The God had three in one, Father, Spirit, Son, the Lion and the Lamb, the Lion and the Lamb. Sing with me, how great is our God, sing with me. 
praise my God. Sing with me how great is our God. And all will see how great, how great is our God. How great is our God. Sing with me how great is our God and all will see how great how great is our God last time cause how great is our God sing with me how great is our God and all Father, we thank you that your presence has been here this morning. We once again just marvel at your greatness. Help us to understand that. Help us to appreciate that even more as we go about our daily tasks today and the rest of this week. We thank you for your word. We thank you for your spirit that, was, that is here now. And we ask your blessing upon us as we go out into this world. And as Mike has said this morning, may we start sowing seed in your kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Let's close the service with the grace. <laughs> may the, the grace, grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the and love, love of God, God and, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, Spirit be with us all. Do join us for tea and coffee in the other room.